It all begins at the municipal school in the city of Tama, where vigorous and energetic students spend their time peacefully. But somewhere within this school, in the darkest corners, something evil is found. A student, Kanan, who is a demon, is ready to consume the soul of anyone she encounters. With this premise begins the story of Kanan. Might be easy. Our main character, Kyoji, tells us that he suddenly woke up in the disciplinary counseling room. He wonders what he is doing here to which his superior Kanan welcomes him and mentions that she has been waiting for him. The superior answers his question by telling him that she called him here, and his spirit responded on its own. He asks, my spirit, the senpai nods, and teasingly comments that she is going to eat him, and mockingly asks him for his forgiveness. Our Kyoji is still somewhat confused, so she explains to him that she is the daughter of the great demon Belzeba, the gluttonous demon. And her name is Conan Gourmet. Like the typical movie villain, she tells him that the disciplinary committee is just a facade to be able to consume the souls of young guys, and in fact, inferior creatures like him. To be consumed by her should be quite an honor. But suddenly Kyoji kneels down, loudly exclaiming, Thank you, Conan, super confused, asks him if he really is grateful, to which she nervously laughs with a ha 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 ha, and asks if it is because of fear that he is praising her. But Kyoji replies by saying that his dream was always to be able to be consumed by a little devil like her. That in addition, she also donned a cosplay, all sensual for the occasion, for which he feels very grateful. Conan feels embarrassed and concludes that he is misinterpreting things. She said eat, in the literal sense of the word, not in the sexual sense. And what she has on is not cosplay. As Kyoji undresses, she quickly thinks that secondary boys only think of procreating adding that a bug like him couldn't touch a millennial demon like her. But on second thought this is a great opportunity. The opportunity to remove his soul while they make love. The succubus kind. It doesn't seem like a bad idea. The only disadvantage to the plan is that she does not have any experience. She is a virgin demon that has lived thousands of years. And returning to reality, Kyoji was just about to throw himself at her. But she asks him to wait. This is something that should be done with someone you like. But Kyoji replies by saying that that is okay, and that there's no problem. What's more, is that now he has started to like her. Kanan replies with a, Damn, you are very insistent. But Kyoji asks her a question. Did you not call me because you like me? Senpai. In fact, Kanan has just realized that in all those thousands of years, she has not been interested in anybody. The only thing that mattered, was the shine each human soul had. But now that she's seen Kyoji up close, she notes that he is definitely her type. Kyoji does not want to waste time and tells her that he likes her very much. But she does not want to and nervously begins to panic, telling him to please stop and to give her some time. Attempting to think straight, Kanan asks herself if she really wants her first time to be with someone inferior like him. Her, the great demon Kanan. But Kyoji interrupts by saying that it looks like he is bothering her to which he does not wish to insist and end up hurting Kanan, but adds that she at least do it with her mouth. But Kanan screams no, to which he changes his proposal, and asks that she use her hand. But that is also a no from Kanan, who concludes it is too soon, to which he concludes by asking if she would like to start things off as just being a couple, to which Kanan, embarrassed, replies that if it is just that, that is fine. Kyoji internally celebrates, but Kanan realizes that she has just made a mistake. In her mouth, she feels like she has just signed a contract that was a total scam. The next day, we are presented with Kanan. She is a highly respected student. Apart from being the president of the public moral committee, she is beautiful and smart. She is naturally talented in sports and gets along well with the professors and students. But deep down, she guards a terrible secret. She is a devourer of souls, taking advantage of young humans, a demon, while looking at all the students from above. She energetically exclaims that being eaten by a being such as her is something gratifying for scum such as humans. But suddenly Kyoji arrives to save the day, telling Kanan that he would like to go home together. Kanan, from the surprise, chokes on her juice. Choking, she attempts to say something and questions. So you've arrived. But Kanan asks him why she would do something like that to which Kyoji responds by saying that they're a couple. That is the reason why Kanan stays in shock. But when she recovers, she decides to go with him. When they are on their way, she will show him his place once and for all. But in the meantime while they walk, Kanan stays behind to which Kyoji asks why she doesn't walk next to him. And the truth is she feels embarrassed to do so. To which Kanan invents an excuse saying that one never knows when you could be attacked by bad people. Given she is a distinguishable, 
an important figure of society, to which she here asks Kyoji to be her human shield, to which he accepts saying he is happy to be of service. He lets her get close, and swears that he will protect her. If she goes too far it could be dangerous, which is why they should hold hands. But Kanan goes blank, seeing as holding hands means that they could end up reproducing and having heirs. She is very irritated, but if she rejects him he might think she is scared to which she is trapped. But she gets a grand idea, and that is to tie his hands together with a rope as if he were a puppy. She exclaims that now she has a firm hold on his hands, in an indirect manner, to which Kyoji responds by saying that that is amazing. He mentions that she has tied his hands, seeing as she does not wish to wander from him, which means she wishes to subjugate his body and mind letting her love for him escape. Kyoji can hear the whispers of her heart, but Kanan is really confused and affected seeing as Kyoji does not appear to have the neurons to understand that she just wants to stay away from him and that she despises him. To which, trapped and humiliated at being defeated by Kyoji's ignorance, flees cursing him. In the middle of their walk, we see that Kanan only insults poor Kyoji. She mentions that she gets nervous in his presence, but she didn't come to our world to do foolish things. She came for the sole objective of eating the most delicious and brilliant spirits. We are shown a brief flashback, which is located in the demon realm. Months ago, Kanan asks her father something. Her father being in a banquet gives her a welcome and asks her if she wishes to eat with him. But she mentions that this is the exact problem. Nothing she eats appears to be delicious to her. Her father, now worried, asks if she has been eating well, seeing as if she doesn't. She could get sick. Taking advantage of his words, Conan tells him she wants to go to the human realm and eat their souls before they are ripe. She knows it will be difficult, but the effort will be worth it. Her father responds and tells her that when he was young he too did all of that but got in a lot of trouble with the angels. Something Conan is not new to seeing as her father has told this story thousands of times, to which she turns to leave after saying goodbye. But before leaving, her father stops her, asking if she has eaten with anyone. You know, a company. But she responds with a no, that high quality food is best eaten alone. To which her father, satisfied with her response, wishes his daughter the best. But as we know, nothing she has planned is turning out well. Now that Kyoji is ruining it, but in the least expected moment, we hear Kyoji's voice. He is lying behind Kanan. She asks him where the heck he came, from to which he answers by saying that she has been dragging him. For quite some time seeing as she didn't let go of the rope for a single moment, Kanan did not notice she had been dragging him, while being deep in her own thoughts. But the weirdo that is Kyoji tells Kanan that being dragged across the park, without saying a single word was his first time having such a stimulating walk. Kanan doesn't know what to say. She is just surprised by Kyoji's optimism, to which Kyoji tells her that being treated like a pet is something he likes. But Kanan angrily tells him not to confuse an accident with one of his weird fetishes. She tries to figure out a way to leave, but Kyoji comments that now that they are here, they should do something together. Kanan only imagines the worst, but in the next scene, we see that Kanan is eating a croquette or better yet, observing it. Kyoji tells her that he has wanted to eat with her for a very long time. Kanan asks him if she needs to add something to the croquette, but Kyoji tells her that she doesn't need to add anything to it seeing as it is much better by itself. But Kanan, in turn, responds by saying, isn't adding something to it supposed to make it more delicious? But Kyoji responds by saying no, disappointed by Kanan's tastes, to which she says, he has no right to judge her. Taking a breath, Kyoji comments, in a whole scene, how important and sublime the croquettes are without sauce. To which Kanan is left surprised by how talkative he is today and takes note that he is quite funny. For being so passionate about the croquettes, she thought that Kyoji was only someone depraved to which she calls him cute. And without further escape, she decides to try it and when she does, she realizes how delicious it is. She simply cannot understand why it is so delicious. This food is supposed to be simple and not very refined. But Kyoji comments that the croquette tastes more delicious than usual, because he is eating it accompanied by her. To which Kanan recalls her words in the past noting, that eating with someone else makes food taste much better with which she decides to take another bite. And Kyoji stares at her, and this annoys Kanan. But Kyoji tells her that she looks very beautiful when she eats. To which Kanan turns red, cursing at Kyoji. The next day, in the morning, Kanan presents us with what her routine is like. She wakes up early in the morning, and so as not to arouse suspicion, she infiltrates herself into an average family. She shows us her human family, her father, mother, and brother, substitutes. When she came into the human realm, 
She brainwashed them to pretend to be the older sister. They see her as the perfect daughter, but there is just one small detail, and that is that brainwashing needs to be done regularly. She says goodbye and leaves the house feeling accomplished at playing with the humans. Conan adds that despite Kyoji besting her in some things, she is still a superior demon. The narrator asks her what humans are to her, and she responds by saying they are nothing more than food. But Kyoji, standing behind her, asks why she talking to herself. Conan gets scared because she was not expecting him to be there. She asks him what he is doing around these parts. In a calm manner, he responds and explains that he has wanted to go to school with her as a couple. Conan questions, couple, stop talking as if you had a social life. But much more important is how he was able to get the address to her house, to which Kyoji tells her that he had asked the professor. She, in a very adorable manner, told him, but that's supposed to be prohibited. Conan responds, and even though the professor asked Kyoji to keep it a secret, he told her, to which Kyoji again asks if she will go to school with him. She responds and says she will, but it will be a race all the way to school to which she starts running. She thinks that not even joking will she go by his side, seeing that with a race this would be a good way to avoid the situation. Besides demons have a physical strength incomparable to that of normal humans. But all of a sudden we see that a girl is going much faster than Conan. She notices that she is tired and losing speed. Kyoji asks her if she is tired, to which she replies with a, No, I'm not tired. Conan quickly looks for an excuse to avoid tainting her reputation, to which she comments that good women, even if they are the best in something, always let their partner outshine them, pointing out to us that this is a very condescending argument. Kyoji clearly looks affected by the comment, and adds that this phrase is often used by wives, to which Conan notices that she has just stuck her foot in her mouth yet again. Kyoji asks her if she didn't know this, something to which she doesn't know how to respond, but Kyoji becomes excited and asks if by any chance she meant that she views herself as his wife. And Conan, turning so that her face is not seen, is very frustrated, seeing as things are not turning out as she had hoped. But we see that Kyoji is taking something out of his pocket. This is a bottle of water. Conan gets scared by the chill that travels to her neck, to which Kyoji asks if she wants some water. Ever the gentleman, Conan yanks the bottle from him. Kyoji adds that he would also like some water, to which he asks that she not drink all of it. While Conan drinks the water, she thinks that if she gives it back to him it would be an indirect kiss in which case. Looking at Kyoji, she decides that it would be best to drink all of it. Kyoji begs her not to, but she finishes it in an epic fashion. She recycles the bottle and asks him what he pretended to do. Cursed inferior being. In class, we are presented with a new person. We have Masurao who is Kyoji's classmate. She asks him if it's true that he has a girlfriend. He comments that Conan is a year older than him. To which Mesorao answers, So you like older people, and I hear I thought you were shy. But there is something that she is more curious about, and that is about the names. Or in other words, how they call each other. Since they are a couple, they must have loving nicknames. But being Kyoji, she tells us that he has probably been calling her by her name. But Kyoji notices something. Changing scene, we see Conan, laughing in a cocky manner saying that she feels great looking from above at the livestock referencing her classmates. But suddenly in the scene Kyoji enters scaring Conan. She tells him to stop appearing out of nowhere, but he asks her to call him by his name. To which Conan, clearly used to the dramatic Kyoji asks him, your name. In response, he says that despite being a couple, she keeps calling him by his last name. As a sign of affection, he would like to call each other by their first names. But being indecisive, she comes up with something better making herself the difficult one or the interesting one attempting to make fun of Kyoji. But we see Kyoji really wanting her to call him by his name. And seeing how cute he gets, she decides to call him by his name. But he has to be grateful, seeing as she is much higher than him in the hierarchy. But while she is pronouncing his name, she notices that she cannot say it naturally. She feels embarrassed, to which she tries with much effort to stay calm. And while trying to say it repeatedly, Kyoji interrupts her and asks if she is, in any case, embarrassed to call him by his first name, to which Conan is trapped, but she will not be humiliated so easily, to which her excuse is that if he wants her to call him by his first name, he needs to call her by her name first, to which Kyoji, with his pants put on real tight, calls her Conan. She, feeling an energy from the tip of her toes to the top of her head, starts to think that she has touched heaven from all the happiness, but quickly returning to her reality. She says that Kyoji is asking her to call him by his name to feel heaven too, to which Kyoji responds that now is his turn. 
and calling her Conan at every moment causes the protagonist to lose her cool, feeling more vulnerable each time. Kyoji says, Come on Conan, please Conan, cornering her against the lockers. He whispers in her ear, Conan, and our favorite little devil finds herself trapped, flowing with happiness. She will not let him win so easily, to which she musters up enough determination to throw a punch with so much force that Kyoji loses a tooth. She asks him to at least add the san at the end, and tells him to not think of himself as the bigger shrimp in the aquarium. Pronouncing the next words, I'll see you tomorrow. Kyoji is left in pain, but in shock. Kanan retreats blushing and running away, swearing she will get vengeance some other time. Kyoji tries to stop her but is not able to. The day starts with Kanan, once again, calling out a pair of lovers, who are too close giving each other kisses and having physical contact. We recall that Kanan is the president of the disciplinary committee. She is bothered by this type of behavior. She adds that the students only think about making love 24-7, and that stains their souls. But there is nothing to worry about as she is willing to make the effort to keep them in check. And in that way, their souls will remain pure and she will be able to eat them. But without being aware, Kyoji was behind her and tells her that something seems quite good-looking, quite appealing. No, Kanan keeps silent, thinking about why in the world he is so close and wondering since when he has been standing there. As always, she detests him. She can't believe that a human could have made her sign a couple's contract with her. The daughter of the high demon Beelzebub, to which she will once again try to make it clear to him that they are not on the same level. They are not the same. She gets away from Kyoji and asks him what he is doing here. He responds by saying that since they are a couple now, this is normal. Him wanting to spend time with her. In Kanan, growing weaker when Kyoji mentions the forbidden words. In this case, couple, she can only limit herself by turning around since he cannot see her face this way. But Kyoji asks her, where would you like our first place to be? Kanan freezes, blank, without knowing how to respond, only blushing and getting nervous. She starts to think about a way to escape the situation, how perverted Kanan thinks. But regaining her composure, she tells him, making memories. Apparently, you ended up being romantic. Kyogi, where were you thinking? To which Kyoji responds, the park. Again, she becomes frozen asking herself, the park. He comments that it would be great, since it's on the way to school. That way they would remember that moment every time they come to school. But Kanan calls him a pervert, and Kyoji, thinking it through, comments that it could be at the movie theater. But she answers angrily that there are too many people, to which Kyoji comes up with the idea about a trip. Kanan appears excited to which she asks where. He answers that it would be at the hot springs, but Conan doesn't like that idea, to which, embarrassed, she says that his bedroom would be better, to which Kyoji decides to take note and responds by saying that it will be the most exciting because he will be able to fulfill senpai's desire and says the words that every man would like to say. Let's make it unforgettable. Our first date, Conan, like a deck of cards, falls into embarrassment, telling him that she knew that from the beginning and was not at all confused or that she absolutely did not misunderstand. Besides, the date would be in his bedroom, only and if it was during a time his parents would be there. And running away from the embarrassment, Conan leaves. Kyoji wins yet another day, unaware that things are about to get very interesting. Gym class ends. We see Conan sweating. Kyoji meets up with her and tries to give her some compliments, but she orders him not to get close, moving away from him with a sharp look, to which Kyoji gets worried and asks if she is mad already. He asks her if he did something wrong. If in case, she no longer loves him, she probably only wanted his body. But she tells him to stop spewing nonsense. She is sweating which is why she doesn't want him getting close to her. But Kyoji cries even more seeing as he wants to smell Kanan. And she feels attacked. He explains that the aroma of youth is something admired around the country. But she replies by saying that is because they're all crazy. He tells her that if it were her, he would use her tights as a mask. But Kanan tells him, gross, but Kyoji says that it must smell good, to which he starts to trap Kanan. He says that if it is her smell, he will like it. Kanan reacts awkwardly to Kyoji's forbidden words, and vulnerably tells him that if he insists she will give him a taste of her smell to which Kyoji starts smelling. He smells quickly but gently and once he is done he starts smelling more aggressively, but without hurting her. And Kanan, embarrassed, hopes he finishes soon. But from one moment to the next she reflects on the humiliating situation. Kyoji did everything possible to accomplish his devilish desire. And she, like some pervert, made him kneel before her and smell her. Is this perhaps what it means to maintain the pride of a demon? 
but leaving her thoughts behind and coming back to reality. She realizes that Kyoji keeps smelling her. She sees him as if he were a dog so as not to die from embarrassment. And when Kyoji finishes, he tells her that her smell is. But before continuing, Kanan does not want to know what he thinks or has to say about her smell. It's making her embarrassed. But Kyoji without compassion says, You use attack, right, the detergent. But Kanan tells him that has nothing to do with her smell. But in her carelessness, she drops her towel, to which Kyoji lets her borrow his own so that she can use it. Then Kanan starts to use it, and senses a citrus smell, and wonders if perhaps it is Kyoji's smell. The aroma calms her and she thinks she likes it, but she notices that she is doing the same thing Kyoji did a few moments ago. I look like a degenerate, Kanan says, but Kyoji curiously asks what his towel smells like in Kanan, shocked, because he noticed that she was smelling it, thinks about it and yells out that it doesn't smell like anything. The final panel tells us that Kanan buys air fresheners with a citrus smell on the way home. The next chapter starts with a visit to the demon realm where we can see the demon lord calling a so-called Ami, who presents herself before him. The boss asks her to go to the human realm and see how his daughter is doing. She accepts the petition and tells him she will make sure to take care of Kana. A few moments later, Ami arrives at the school, presenting herself before Kana. She was stepping on Kyoji's pride as always. When she becomes aware of Ami's presence, she greets her and asks her what she is doing in the human realm. Ami tells her that she wants to be a part of the fun. But before continuing, Kyoji gets up and asks who the maid is to which Kanan presents her mentioning that she is a servant that has been by Kanan's side since she was little. Kyoji wants to hear about the stories of when Kanan was little, but Kanan ignoring him, as always, asks Ami why she has come. Has she convinced her father to let her come here? To which Ami playfully says that their relationship is not only of master and servant, but is more like that of childhood friends. But Kanan worries because if Ami is here she might bring big problems. And of all the people that could have come, she is the worst of them all. Among all the reasons, the main one is because she is a succubus. She is an authentic devourer of men. And if she were to get a look at Kyoji, he will not doubt to offer his own body. To which she quickly tries to move him away and tell him that Ami is a dangerous woman. And he cannot get close. But the servant, excited, asks her to present him to her. When all of a sudden, Ami notices something. That something is obviously Kyoji. He is a man with a lot of vitality and a strong soul. We are told, for which she pounces on him and tells him she will just get a little taste. But Kanan exclaims, no, he is off limits. And Ami asks her why, to which Kanan responds by saying Kyoji is her. But before finishing her sentence she remembers that this is a forbidden word to which she timidly says, boyfriend, to which Ami with eyes full of curiosity asks, boyfriend, what have you been doing here miss? And why is your face completely red? Are you serious? Losing control. Ami pressures Kanan to tell her everything. She exclaims that the millennial virgin finally has a boyfriend. That is great news but how far have they gotten? Have you made love? She asks. Kanan responds by saying they have gone home together. Ate croquettes. And also called each other by their first name. And although Kanan is happy. Ami is noted to be quite anguished. Though I think this is a face of disgust of disappointment, perhaps questioning if they are little kids, and what kind of preschool romance this is, to which she angrily lashes out against Kanan telling her that she has lived thousands of years, and that doing this is not something complicated knowing how men are with the feminine body. This is a great deal, but Kanan tells her that to seduce a man in such a way is super dishonest. Ami responds by asking if they are going to take such a long time she can just eat him, but Kyoji refuses by saying that Kanan is his girlfriend. After all, and he is someone loyal, to which Ami responds by saying that she doesn't care about that kind of thing. A trio would not be that bad, but Kanan does not want to and pushes Kyoji to leave. We see Ami happy, or better yet showing a slight smile, saying that of all things, Kanan ended up getting involved with a human. What will happen if her father finds out? But well, she looks very happy now, so much so that she wishes to encourage her. But that doesn't stop me from having fun, to which she pounces and hugs Kyoji. She tells him that there is nothing wrong with having one or two really good girl friends. But Kanan yells at her saying that she cannot do that. Ami does not stop bothering our couple, making Kyoji wonder if this is what it feels like to be popular. And Kanan asks him to stop embarrassing himself with what Ami is saying. A new day begins, but we see that today the school looks like a disaster. Kanan is very worried and wonders what has happened, because everyone has fainted. She sees a small mountain of students, and while she walks, we hear a few students talking about a servant, 
to which Conan now realizes what the problem is. She speeds up, and opening the door to the infirmary, sees Ami with the professor. Conan asks the professor what she is doing, and the sensei responds by saying that it isn't what it looks like. Fleeing, she says that they say her with a student. Conan only stays quiet without understanding everything that has just happened. Ami gets up and dusts her apron off. She greets Conan and tells her that they will not talk about what happened today. But Conan is quite annoyed to not talk about what happened today. She asks her why there are so many passed out people outside, to which Ami asks if she is talking about the humans. And Conan yells at her saying she already knows they're humans. The point is that the school is her spirit farm. She has bothered to take care of them so that they don't get sick and so that their spirits stay healthy. For that reason, she asks her how Ami dared to suck their lust and dirty their souls. Conan was saving them for later to which Ami responds by saying it was her fault for waiting so long. Conan, now bothered, tells her that in comparison, she has refined taste. But Ami tells her that is not true. She also has refined tastes and only eats what gets her attention. To which Conan responds, Seriously? Well let's see, is this old guy refined taste? And Ami responds by saying, I like him. This little girl is cute. This fatty, I love him. This delinquent, Brian steals phones. Scum of society, I love that. Ami responds to which Conan now bothered, tells her she likes everything. Ami says they are very attractive. But Conan asks her if she is still on about that to which Ami explains, saying that the old man had gotten lost and asked for help. He, in turn, gave her some tea. The little girl was part of a food club and invited her for some cookies. That tasted great. Brian knew a lot about mangas for girls and the fatty had really smooth skin and a lot of meat to grab onto, which highlights that all humans are attractive. Conan thinks that she is really surprising. She only sees the good in everyone else. When she was little she had a weird personality, but she was always popular and got along with everyone. She even feels envy about that. Even so, it is her fault that the school is a disaster. Conan apologizes. She tells her that she made a mistake, but emphasizes that from here on out she cannot touch her school. That doesn't include strangers. Ami agrees, but Conan is still worried and asks her what she thinks about Kyoji. Is he, by any chance, attractive to her? Ami doesn't understand what she means, but when she sees Conan's face, we see that she is blushing, which by one mocking look tells her that it is a secret. This makes Conan wonder why she cannot tell her. Conan's insecurity towards Ami increased. That day on a regular weekend, we see Ami has uncovered something good. She has seen her master's boyfriend with another woman. We see that Conan is at the place where the event took place. Kyoji greets her and tells her that it is a coincidence or an act of destiny to find her here. But Conan is clearly angry and with an intimidating aura, tells him that she doesn't care about destiny and asks him who that female is. The girl smiles but asks herself if, by any chance, her name is female. Kyoji was presenting her, but the girl interrupts saying her name, Nadiko. She scolds Kyoji and says that she does not like to be called by her last name. And the way she says it, Conan thinks that they are flirting in front of her, to which she asks what kind of relationship they have. She responds by saying that they are childhood friends, even close friends. Ami interrupts by saying that if they know each other, then they are friends by right. And we see that Conan did not know that Ami was there. But more importantly, is Conan's reaction to this. She starts to think and take Ami's words seriously. If they are friends by right, that means she is trying to take something that belongs to her. She and Kyoji are supposed to have a couple's contract, to which she looks at her in a hostile manner and exclaims that she will just eat them. Nadiko feels the hostility and asks what this stalking sensation is, to which she asks Kyoji who the girl is. Is she the daughter of a gangster? Kyoji responds by saying that she is his girlfriend. Nadiko, he leaves her surprised, and she questions girlfriend, and notices that Kanan is the girl in front of her, and probably misunderstood things, and that is why she is looking at her so coldly, to which she attempts to quickly clear things up by explaining that she is Kyoji's childhood friend, and nothing more. Their parents knew each other for quite some time. I don't know if you can see Ami eating ice cream in the background. But Conan does not understand her words and asks her if she wants to make her boyfriend fall in love too. But Nadiko tells her it isn't like that. They just live close to each other and he accompanied her while shopping. But it isn't a date, as there isn't anything between them. But Conan is so jealous that her anger blinds her and tells her that she understands. She understands that she only has to take off her skin, dismember her, and tear her to pieces. Clearly, she understands nothing. Conan is beyond furious and a demon's natural reaction 
is to laugh uncontrollably in that state. Nadiko asks Kyoji for help to stop his girlfriend, but he only admires Kanan's smile. Nadiko is in big trouble. In big trouble, she has to find a way to calm Kanan down. She starts to flatter her, telling her she is beautiful, that she is a great person and in fact, they are a great pair. But Kanan doesn't care about this. Nadiko again asks Kyoji for help, but again, he is blinded by his girlfriend's beauty. And Kanan asks her what her last words are to which Nadiko, with her final card, tells her she is the most beautiful person and in turn wants to have her as a wife. She is Yoiga's wife. That is Kyoji's name. And using one of the forbidden words, makes Kanan enter into a state of weakness exclaiming and telling her to stop saying that. She is not his wife. Nadiko, on the floor, is amazed that this has worked. She cannot believe that this was the forbidden word. But Kanan harshly speaks to Nadiko and tells her that she is not Kyoji's wife, for now, but she likes that she is a girl that knows her place, to which she says that she likes her. Lower life form Nadiko. Nadiko is still on the floor stupefied and embarrassed by what Kanan has called her. Nadiko narrowly escapes by the hair on her head and will live a little bit longer. For now, another day begins, and we see Kanan and Kyoji patrolling the school. He is very happy to be of service, but Kanan has other plans, and tells him that this is not a normal patrol. The plan is to train Kyoji so that he knows what the difference is between the two of them. However, we know that with Kanan's luck, it's not looking up and unexpected things start to happen. A girl trips by his side and Kyoji asks her if she is alright. She is blushing and thanks him. He offers to help in a gentleman-like fashion to which he asks where she needs to take her things. We see that the environment starts to get somewhat romantic, and she responds by saying the teacher's lounge. But before things escalate further, Conan, like the protagonist of this story, separates them. She tells the student, while looking at her from over her shoulder, that they are busy patrolling, so she will have to go alone. Conan tells us that she hates females who get too close. She emphasizes that it is not only the female cat of Mdiko that likes to eat others' food, but there's no need to misinterpret things. It's not that she's jealous. Of course not. Evidently, this is what you call taking care of the livestock. But we see things get even more interesting. A distracted girl bumps into Kyoji. She apologizes, and Kanan tells Kyoji to hurry up and walk by her side. Later, a girl falls from the stairs, and Kyoji tells her to be careful. And this girl, blushing, asks him for his name. Kanan screams at Kyoji to be quiet, as if he were a dog without a leash. While asking herself what is going on, Kyoji slips away and asks a girl what she has in her hair. Is it by chance a cookie stuck to her hair? This girl, embarrassed, tells him that it is a heroine, and very captivated tells him that there has never been a man who has spoken to her in such a vulgar manner. With her being a millionaire, he presents himself as Barika, and it appears to us that Kyoji is an interesting man. But Kanan screams to not introduce another romantic plot right now. Kanan asks Kyoji if by any chance he is a natural seductor. He doesn't stop seducing women, and she emphasizes once again what he is to her, to which Kyoji interrupts and says he is her boyfriend making Kanan enter into her weakened face and start blushing, reassuring herself. She says, he does remember. She says that that's all right then. She forgives him, given. She reminds him that she likes him, mentioning once again that the discipline is working. But Kyoji receives a message. He says the text is from Nadiko. Kanan gets mad once again and reads the messages next to Kyoji. Nadiko texts him saying that she made a lot of meat. And what's more, asking if his parents are not home. For which once he gets back home she will bring him some food. Kyoji says he likes meat but Kanan, about to explode with rage, yells at him, saying that Nadiko is buying him with food. She starts to throw a tantrum, and throws her head against his chest as a sign of protest. When she stops she tells him he has a contract with her, to which he cannot look at anyone else, and asks with kitten eyes if he understands. The silence takes over the hallway. And he tells her she is very pretty when she is jealous. She explodes seeing as he ignores her question. She clarifies that she is not jealous about anything. But Kyoji caresses her head and tells her that she is so cute. To which Kanan is rendered weak and starts feeling better. It is like magic. She attempts to resist but she cannot. Her anger can't be appeased with pampering. She mentions. But despite the internal battle, she is rendered submissive before Kyoji's members on the outside. 